My name is Joe Riker. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Stop Doctor. Today we're over in my four car storage garage with my 97X. It has had a DOD issue for the last 18 months. After the last video I made, which I'll put a link in the description below, I just took it and parked it in here so the uh, lifter would stop machining the cam because I'm pretty sure the, lift, the stuck lifter is just grinding away at that cam. So today we're going to get it started, hope the air suspension reinflates itself, pull it into the shop, and we're going to go over everything I bought for it and start taking it apart. Stay tuned. All right, to start this off, I'm going to throw a battery in. I've got my 8 mil ratchet, and I already have it all disassembled because I uh, took the old battery out. Okay, now in, okay, now in here, there's actually a bar that goes across, and the battery cover, and a hold down. These are all super easy to take out, but obviously, obviously, I'm not going to put this all back in until this is all back together because I'll probably have to pull the battery out again. So let's get her hooked up. Alright, the battery is in. Now for the moment of truth. When I start it, does the suspension come back up? I'm, I'm really, really hoping it does, because that'll save me a few hundred bucks. came right back up and the check engine light's still flashing which is I guess good and bad but uh hey after sitting since December and it's September now I don't think that's half bad I'm gonna pull the lime yellow car out of the uh, shop and back this in up and see what I've got. We have ARP cam bolts for my uh, three bolt cam. We have a valley cover with bolts. Part of their DOD delete kit. We have valve springs. We have, hmm, not a hundred percent sure. Ah, we have uh, lifters. That's what these are. Genuine GM parts. We have, these are head bolts. Yep. Lifter buckets. We have a genuine GM three bolt camshaft cam, uh, camshaft gear. We have a pulley bolt. We have a guide. We have a Texas Speed keychain and sticker. Excellent. Then I have 
of head gaskets and a seal kit for the front. Then last, but definitely very not least, and probably one of, oh wait, I haven't unpacked this box. But last and definitely not least of this box, and probably one of the most expensive things, Texas Speed, this is a stage four truck cam. Oh, I'm excited for this. This is gonna be awesome. And these should be push rods. Open her up quick. Yep, Comcam push rods. So that's everything. That should be just about everything I need to delete DOD. I'm still ordering headers in a Y pipe yet. So that should be here sometime this coming week, and obviously that will show up in the videos. But this should be the base of everything. Obviously, I'll, I'll probably end up grabbing some things from my local parts store, like valve cover gaskets and whatnot, if those aren't reusable for some reason. Uh, I, I've been told that they are, and that's probably why they're not included in the DOD Delete Kit, because the DOD Delete Kit is... all of this stuff. These were my add-ons. I added the cam, I added the push rods, and I added the springs, because that all goes with the cam. So, I guess at this point, uh, we crack her open and start working on it. All right, let me start off by saying this is not a tutorial. However, if you follow along, you'll at least be able to see what to do and what not to do to replace the cam and remove DOD in your 5.3 liter or GMT 360 chassis. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with um, getting some of the stuff off the front. I know I'm going to need to remove the radiator and move the condenser out of the way or remove it completely, don't know yet. I may just remove the bumper because that might give me a little bit of extra room. So I think I'll probably start there. Even though I was told it doesn't necessarily need to be removed, but I think that'll make the process a whole lot easier. So let's get rolling. Okay, now that the front end's off, we have a lot more room for activities. So I'm going to start like getting the condenser all loosened up. I'm going to start getting everything done like that. Probably drain the coolant next. And we're going to start taking everything off. I think I actually, I think I actually need a much bigger drain pan than just this bucket because this coolant's going to shoot out pretty far underneath. All right, now since I'm going to have to uh, run to the store to get a different drain pan, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to take like the you know, this air box noise thingy off and the hose and, you know, the air, actual air box and try and start making room on the top so I can actually do the DOD delete. I mean, it's all gonna have to come off anyways. May as well do something before I run to the store.
I'm going to be honest, this isn't what I was expecting to uh, find when I pulled the um, when I pulled the top of the air box off. This is uh, definitely interesting. It's probably not interesting to anybody that's ever worked on any GM vehicles, but uh, I mainly work on Saabs and European stuff, so th th that's an interesting one for me. Hopefully I took enough stuff off because we're going to try taking the intake off. bolter loose we're going to take it we're going to release the fuel pressure from the rail all right fortunately there wasn't a lot and I'm going to grab a quick disconnect and we'll remove the fuel line after the fuel lines removed the intake can come out unless I missed something And the intake's out, so that's a good start. One thing I'm going to note, that intake took a bit of finesse and finagling to get out. So if you're doing this yourself at home, make sure, you know, have a little bit of patience when you're trying to pull that out of there. Okay, so I went to the store, and I got two things. I got a tote, which will be perfect for uh, that coolant drainage. And I got an underhood LED work light, so uh, we're going to start using this. Hopefully this helps out a bit. But now we can drain the coolant. One thing I want to show you first, though, is some mice. So some mice obviously had a party in here. So I'm going to grab the uh, shop vac, clean this all out quick before I start with uh, anything else. All right, this light doesn't seem to do very bad for uh, brightness either for the money. Let's get this cleaned up. All right, that's way better. No stuff there anymore. All right, next up, I'm going to pull the coil packs off of both sides. Um, kind of whatever happens to the wires, whatever happens to the wires, I'm going to replace those. So uh, let's get it done.
Okay, so now that the coils are off, I'm going to pull the valve covers off next. All right, side number one is taken apart. This is the driver's side. Now let's do the passenger side. Okay, so I was pretty sure that it was a stuck lifter and... It definitely is. That lifter is stuck in the down position. So, uh, good thing we're doing this DOD delete. I think next up I'm going to... Uh, maybe take the valley cover off? Yeah, I think I'll take the valley cover off. We'll take a peek down there next. Okay, so one thing I'm definitely going to do is I'm definitely going to take the uh, valley cover and just put it back in for the time being because I don't want to get any stuff in the engine. I just want to take a peek. I want to see uh, what the condition of the cam was. It's definitely got some wear on it, but nothing terrible. So I'm just going to grab a uh, cloth, kind of wipe up the top here, and then put that valley cover back on. One thing I will note on this valley cover if you start looking at it, there is a lot of like sludge buildup on here. So, is that zooming in? There we go. Focus there. There's a lot of sludge buildup on there. Okay, so it's getting a little late tonight. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drain the coolant now so it has overnight to drain. Um, I got. a big clear tote to do this with. I figured that would make it a whole lot easier than trying to put a bucket under there. So uh, let's crawl under, get that hose off, and let it all drain out overnight. Okay, I actually left the GoPro up at the house accidentally. So we're using the big camera underneath the car tonight. This will be interesting. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but the radiator hose is right here. I'm going to take the tote, put it under. Get my arm in there. Okay, I know there's a whole lot more Dex Pool than that in there. So this is all we've got thus far. I know there's a whole lot more Dex cool than that in the system, because that's, that's not a lot. That's probably just what's in the radiator. Uh, we'll see what else drains. All right, and while I'm doing this, I may as well just pull this top hose. All right, and I'm going to let the coolant actually drain overnight, and that way when I resume tomorrow, I can take the radiator and whatnot off the front, get a whole lot more room, and then start digging back into everything. All right, it's another night, and you can probably tell it because I'm wearing a different t-shirt. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna start off by taking the radiator out of this thing tonight, so let's get back to work on it. So at this point, with the latch out of the way, what I need to do is I need to get behind and undo the trans cooler lines. You can either actually unbolt them, otherwise there's like a push clip you should be able to pull out with a uh, like a small flat blade screwdriver. So we're going to pull those trans lines out, 
I'm actually going to uh, slip a different pan underneath here because I still have my coolant pan, which I'm actually very surprised didn't pick up more coolant than this. And we're going to get those trans lines out and then get this radiator out of here. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that there is these like black cap things. You pull those back, which you'll expose. It might be hard to see at first, but what you'll expose is a small clip. What you have to do is you have to like slide it out. Now these won't come out for one reason or another. You can always use the uh, portion that you can fit a, uh, fit a wrench on. See this one came out really nice and easy. This is all that's holding, oops, this is all that's holding those trans lines in. So now that that one's out, undo this one. Oh, come on. Let that trans fluid drain down. Just remember if you're doing this, you're going to have to top your trans fluid off afterwards because you will lose a little bit out of the cooler lines. And the trans fluid that's coming out of here is actually nice and pink. It's a very good color. So that's that's really, really good. Well, that's dripping. I'm just going to get the other side done. Or ready, I should say. Alright, for this one over here, I guess I'm going to grab a second pan. Because this one, that one's not done dripping yet. Alright, now with everything drained and disconnected, let's try and get the radiator out. This could get interesting. My AC system is charged and working. I'm actually going to try and leave the condenser in place. I don't know if that's going to happen. I was going to remove the uh, fan clutch, then I or the fan and the fan clutch, and then I realized that I don't have the uh, special tool required. So I'm going to have to pick one of those up. But I guess I'm going to pull the serp belt and see what I can pull off the front of the engine because it's all going to have to come off anyways. So let's get that done. Alright, and as always, you're going to find some things that you need to do preventive maintenance on, like these pulleys. Don't know if you can hear that. Same with the tensioner pulley. I mean, I'm going to guess these are stock. This water pump pulley seems fine. Everything else up here looks pretty good. Unfortunately, I think this is where I'm going to end up stopping for tonight just because I need that water pump clutch tool so I can pull that off. Uh, I could probably, actually, you know what, I think I'm going to pull the rockers off and whatnot as well. Yeah, I think I'll do that before I head in. So just a note, I can pull these push rods out, pretty much do whatever I want to with them. I have replacement push rods, I have new ones that go with the cam. So I don't need to keep these in any specific order. I'll probably look at them for wear and whatnot, but that's about it. And then I'll throw them in a, uh, like a bin. So uh, the one thing you do want to do is you want to keep your like rockers from each head 
in order, in the right way, and as you saw when I pulled it out, it had that like little tray underneath it to pull them out with. So definitely leave them in that, and then just remember which one goes in the driver's side and the passenger's side head. So let's get the other side out. So since I really need that fan clutch tool to truly move forward, I'm just going to call it quits for tonight. I'm going to go get that fan clutch tool tomorrow and uh, get everything off the front of the engine. Hopefully then I'll have enough time to also do the um, like manifolds and whatnot since I ordered new headers and a new Y pipe. So I'll, hopefully I'll be able to like, get all that stuff off and then the next then the next go round or the next day if I don't have time I'll uh, be taking the heads off. Once the heads are off, then everything becomes real easy because it's just, you know, pretty much change up some stuff and reassemble. Uh, so that's not that bad. I mean, I obviously have to take the, uh, the front cover off, take the cam out, all that stuff. But I feel like getting the heads off are the, is the next real hard part. Now, hopefully I didn't just jinx what I'm doing tomorrow. So, um, cue tomorrow? All right, so there's noisy things in the background, and it's another day. I have the fan clutch tool right here. It is Lyle 43580. It's the fan clutch tool for GM. So this and a big wrench, and that fan should come off, and then I should be able to take the rest of everything off. Uh, I, I am a little suspect of this because the guys at O'Reilly said that this wasn't open in return, but I have a feeling it may have been because this is just... It's just a little suspect. Anyways, let's get this fan, let's get this fan off. Okay, so I've unwrapped the clutch tool and then you need like a one and seven sixteenths, which is what this is, or a big like adjustable wrench or something like that. Now let's get this fan clutch off. All right, that was actually really, really easy to do with the right tools. Now look at all this room for activity that I can start pulling all this apart, which is perfect. Now last night I actually went in and I ordered new tensioner, new pulleys, you know, I kind of ordered everything that we might need for this. So, um, you know, I just wanted to be prepared. I want to make sure I got everything that might need to be replaced. So let's crack down and get this done. Since everyone knows my track record with thermoset bolts, I am pleased to announce that these two came out without incident. Alright, so next up I'm going to pull the crank pulley and the front cover. I think that's the right way to do this. Um, I'm going to be honest, I, I'm not 100% sure and it's not like I read an instruction manual. We're just pulling off the things that seem to make sense. I'm going to try and leave the AC compressor in. It looks like there's enough room to get, a, to get the cover off around the AC compressor, but I might have to drop it down to remove, you know, to remove that cover, so we'll find out. But. We're going to get that pulley out, we're going to get the uh, front cover off, and we're going to go from there. And in all my brilliance, I didn't even think of the fact that I probably need a puller to pull this crank pulley. So, um, that kind of slows me down there for tonight. 
I guess since the headers are going to come out, I'll start pulling the covers and whatnot off the headers. Okay, it looks like this side might be trapped in by the steering shaft or something. I'm going to need to look at this from the other side before I can really uh, assess that. However, fortunately, at least this shield is loose at a minimum. I can probably, probably should just start cracking all the bolts loose on the header. Actually, it looks like one may have escaped. Not a good sign. Okay, so the driver's side heat shield and header actually started loosening up pretty good. Didn't break any bolts. Now I'm going to cross my fingers that I didn't just jinx myself for the passenger side. So let's start on that. That side's uh, got a whole lot more stuff in the way, it seems. Okay, so the camera cut out there for a minute. A couple things transpired. One, I removed the uh, washer bottle. Two, I got most of the plug wires out. And I disconnected a couple heater hoses. So next up, I'm gonna take this line off that goes between the two, and then I'm going to uh, try and take the head out on the driver's side because I think that if I disconnect the header, I can then pull out the push rods, take all the bolts out, and pull the head off it pull the head off so let's try and get that done And I missed a bunch of bolts. That makes sense why this doesn't just pull off. I'm gonna be honest, it's getting a little late, so I'm going to save the next head. I'm gonna save the other head for tomorrow. 
May as well pull this head gasket off since it's garbage anyways. And uh, we'll resume and I'll have a different shirt on. All right, it's day four, technically day five, because I took day four off and decided to rest instead of working on the 97. I'm starting to get a little worn out. Um, this thing's still gonna get hammered out. It is like Christmas today because all the boxes have arrived and I grabbed the puller for the main pulley from the parts store. So let's open up all these boxes, kind of catalog everything, and then we'll get wrenching on the 97. All right, Rock Auto box number one. Now this is not sponsored at all by Rock Auto, which is why it's not actual Christmas. But I bought a bunch of parts from them because they're very reasonable with all this stuff. All right, we have AC belt. We have a radiator hose. I can't remember if this is upper or lower. We have two AC Delco trans line clips. We have, I'm going to guess that this is, yeah, this is one of the belt tensioners. And this is the other one. So I got both the AC and the regular belt tensioner. And then I got the idler pulleys. So that's what these are. I got these two boxes, so two idler pulleys. And of course, magnet number one is a satellite. All right. Oh, and this one I guess I have to uh, Google a GMC service bulletin before I install it. Box number two. Nope, oh, this one has a Buick. All right, box number two is valve cover gasket and a thermostat which I'm going to have to look at this and make sure that this looks like my other thermostat because this doesn't really look similar. Let's actually open this quick. Oh yeah, it looks identical. Ha, huh, just kidding. Cool. On to the next. Number three is a bunch of packing stuff. Oh, huh. oh, here we go. Box number three has another Buick and a single CarQuest branded belt that is actually significantly cheaper, and it's a Deco, and it's, a, and it's significantly cheaper to actually buy this through Rock Auto. It said it was a, um, it said it was a house brand. So that's kind of funny that they must have bought some like CarQuest uh, inventory or something. All right, box number three. is, here we go, water pump gaskets. And, oh, here's the magnet. Nice, RX-7. And box number four, last but not least. And yes, I know there's still two boxes behind me, but they're not rock auto. Put this radiator hose in there and had a bit of a pinch, so we're gonna just have to let this kind of hang out a bit, straighten itself up. And these are 
Um, gosh, what gasket? Oh, intake manifold. This is the intake manifold gasket. And it says it right, right there, so I should have known that. And, oh, nice. It's an old Cougar. Looks like it's done up with some stuff. That's for all the rock, that's all the rock auto boxes. I'm gonna have to double check that that's the whole list. It seems about right, but just in case. Now, on to the good stuff. I mean, I guess the good stuff is really budget stuff, but what I did was I wanted headers and a, headers and a wide light. So I jumped on Amazon and Amazon Prime, I got these pace setter pieces. And it's funny because they ship from pace setter to Amazon and then to me all within two days. So I can't even imagine how much Amazon paid to ship these. But let's open up these boxes and see what this stuff looks like. Got a box of hardware, which is good because it said it had that. Oh, yes. All right. So I did not go with the, I didn't, so I did not go with the uh, coated ones. I just did black painted because I figured that the paint and everything would come off. These actually look, uh, these actually look pretty good. And it says right on it, not a high temp paint for a longer lasting finish. High temp paint is recommended. Um, and then follow paint manufacturer's instructions. So what it's saying is this paint is going to burn right off as soon as I start this. So, all right, we got two headers. And it said it came with gaskets. Oh, it does. Yep, two headers. Gaskets and bolts. And then I also went and I bought the Y pipe. So let me just throw this back in here. I want I want to look at the gasket quality quick though. Oh yeah, pretty decent quality. I wouldn't say it's great, but I mean, I don't know what else you'd really expect from a header gasket. I might take a look and see what the Felpro ones are like, because I'm sure that my local parts store, like Advanced Auto or whatever, has them. Might check those out. And then, this should be all of the hardware. Yep. One package of bolts. They seem to be pretty decent quality, so I'd say that's a good value right there. And these look like some install instructions. Oh, and they are. On four-wheel drive vehicles, remove front drive shaft. Oh. Okay, well, okay, that'll be fun. I'm excited. And then, let's take a look at the Y pipe. Also, pace setter, also shipped direct from pace setter in two days. that to happen. Wow, that's a... Uh... 
That's pretty beefy. It's a bigger pipe than I was expecting, to be honest. Sweet. Uh, one thing I did just notice is there's no clamps with this. Oh, hang on. Ha ha! But these are clamps. Oh, there we go. Clamps. We're good. And install instructions. So I'll have to look at those as well. Sweet. I gotta say this. So I went with the pace setter stuff. I know it's the cheap stuff. But the way I looked at it was, I want to try it out. This is kind of a daily driver, like not a like not a like show build or anything like that. And I got everything for under four hundred dollars to my door in two days, so uh, I'm not even mad. I think that's pretty excellent. So all right, let's commence on taking the ninety seven apart. Okay, so as you can tell, it's very loud in here. It's raining out. I'm talking really loudly. I feel like. Um, so the next portion is probably just going to be a big montage, just like pretty much the beginning of this event. Um, let's get the head off.
today is day six. Um, I actually wanted to be putting things back together today. However, last night didn't go as planned. Uh, with the rain and everything, my dogs were being a little insane. So I literally only got the manifold out. But the head's loose, almost done. Should be able to get this front cover off. No problem tonight. Top cover will be easy, the valley cover. And I should be able to get the other manifold out and hopefully drop the Y pipe. I know that sounds like a lot. I know it's more than I've accomplished all week. But it has to get done tonight. Because tomorrow has to start reassembly because this is getting tuned on Sunday and today is Friday. So, uh, here we go. Okay, so what I just did there was I pulled out these two lifters. These are the two DOD lifters that were on the dead cylinder. I believe this was the one that was not in the right position. I mean, you can, you can tell this one's stuck down to begin with. Because what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to push up like this when, uh, when, they're, you know, when they're not in that position. So this one's just stuck. You can tell right there. And the good part is, if you look in the block, everything looks good in there. So that's actually a really, really good thing. So, I mean, I'm going to still have to pull the rest of these buckets and lifters out. Not as big of a deal. I just want to make sure that we did not have any damage in the bore or anything like that. You can tell, and I'll be able to show you on the cam when we pull it out, but you can tell on the cam that it's got a little bit of wear, but this is a good thing. This is a very good thing. Alright, so I put the uh, crate pulley puller on, and I actually put the uh, stock bolt back in, twisted it down a bit. This is a trick I saw on YouTube. Now, the guy that I saw do it did use an impact, which I'm not going to use. I am going to use a wrench because, well, you all watch me. You know I don't use wrenches that, or impacts that much, but I also want to make sure that... This is not getting goofed up, you know what I mean? Okay, it didn't grip all the way on the bottom. Let me try this again. Now what the guy on guy I saw on YouTube, what he was using was a Chrysler puller. And this one seems to be, for all intents and purposes, the uh, the same unit. I am going to grab the impact for this. Hang on. All right, air compressor is ringing in the background, so it's a little loud, but let's try giving it a little hit and see what happens. It's pulling it out. All right, I have to reposition the nut. Or I should say the bolt. So right now I'm using the bolt to push on since the bolt is getting replaced. Huh, now I see why this guy said to uh, trim the edges of the bolt down. You need something to push on. Um, I don't want to do that because I need to reuse that bolt to actually reseat this um, pulley. So, let me think this through for a minute. Hold, please. Okay, so since I don't want to uh, trim down a bolt, since I'm going to have to use that to actually... Uh, re-torque the uh, harmonic balancer down. What I grabbed is this. This is actually off of my vise. 
and this head is bigger than the, uh, well, this is about the same size as the crank bolt, so this head's bigger. However, it'll fit over, and I'll be able to slip that pulley over and still be able to torque it down. So we're going to try, or uh, still be able to use that pulley puller. So we're going to try this and see how it works. Okay, so I've got the, I've got the puller back on, pulley's partially out. I'm trying a different trick, and I'm not telling anyone what it is until after I've tested it on this now. Nope, here's the one problem I am running into, though. Fitting my impact in here. Huh. Looks like I might not be able to use the impact. Might have to pull out the, uh, pull out a ratchet, which is perfectly fine. I'm going to have to pull out... Actually, let me grab a shorty. Note, chrome sockets are not for impact use. Ha! It worked. And it didn't do any damage to the crank. Perfect. I'll explain what I just used in a second. So, when backing the crank bolt out most of the way didn't work, because what ha the problem was I ran into the fact of this is not long enough, what I did was, I looked for a screw and a nut where I had like a squarish head or, a, you know, a head that it would fit over and a nut that was bigger than the thread Ooh, that's hard to see bigger than the threads on the uh, crank bolt and what I did is I set it up like this so that way I'd be able to push on it. It would still have a centering bit. I'd be able to push on this edge, which you can see where it pushed, and it pushed it right out and through. Now what this is, is this is actually a Saab 93 lower strut bolt, and these are technically not reusable, and these are ones that I just had sitting around. So that's what I used, crank pulleys off, which is perfect. Now I can pull that front cover off. So let's get on that. Alright, now there's two bolts on the bottom side of this, of this uh, cover in the oil pan, so I'm going to have to probably slide underneath the front to get those. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to remove all of these bolts first and then get those two last. front cover off. That's actually pretty exciting. Okay, so with the front cover off, we're just going to pull the valley cover back off. I had this off earlier in the week. I just had left it on so we didn't get dirt in the engine. Alright, I guess I may as well pull all of the, uh, lifter buckets out, pull the lifters. Okay, one quick thing I'm going to do before I jump underneath it to uh, take the downpipe off and whatnot, and uh, not downpipe, take the Y-pipe off, to ways you can tell I work on turbo cars too much. I'm going to unplug both of the oxygen sensors because they're easier to get it from the top. Alright, 
so didn't quite end up getting the exhaust and whatnot out like I thought I would. However, that's going to be in the next episode. So we're just going to do that then. Um, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for part two, and sob on, folks.